Indeed, so up until now, men in South Africa have been unable to claim maternity leave after the birth of a baby. But a groundbreaking judgment in the Labour Court last week has paved the way for men who are the primary caregivers of a baby to apply for maternity leave. Now, with us in studio to chat about the ruling and what it means is the lawyer who argued the case, Irvin Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. So this is truly groundbreaking stuff. And uh, this comes from uh, a finding that the court made that was uh, related to a homosexual man who was initially refused uh, paid maternity leave, which the court found was an act of discrimination. So just tell us a bit, a bit more about the circumstances surrounding the case and what this means uh, for gay men who are the primary caregivers of, of babies. The case related to a uh, partner in a homosexual relationship, as you've indicated, uh, and he applied for maternity leave. Mm -hmm. He was employed by the state. The maternity leave was initially refused. Uh, he was then treated as an adoptive parent and given two months leave. Mm -hmm. In terms of the law, you're entitled to four months leave. Uh, if you are a maternal parent. Now the word maternal comes from the Latin word maternal, which indicates mother, mm -hmm. and that's how our basic conditions is framed. Uh, and it was on that basis that the state said he was not entitled to four months maternity leave. Yeah. We, took the court, we, we took the decision to court, and the court found that the man, as the primary caregiver, was entitled to the maternity leave. Yeah. Now, how does this relate to heterosexual fathers who are the... Um, well, if you can conceive of a situation where, for example, if you are married and you have a child and the mother dies in childbirth, in that particular case, by design, you then are forced to become the primary caregiver. So conceivably in that situation, you would be entitled to maternity leave yeah. based on this ruling. Yeah. And now that the ruling has been made, I mean, what does this mean for the basic uh, conditions of employment act? Does it have to be amended? And if so, how long does, it, does that take for, for that process to, to pull through? It probably would be because the way in which the actual basic conditions of employment act is framed is, 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 is very uh, disposed to women. So a legislative amendment is likely. Uh, that will it'll have to go through the passage of being passed, being changed. So one one would probably think that it would take close to a year and a half or so to get changed. Yeah, and I mean this is a step in I think in the right direction, uh, you know, all across the board. And I think it, it indicates that we as a country are progressive in our in our way of thinking. Would you say? I think South Africa is very progressive. Our constitution, uh, and and that was one of the points that the actual judge made that. If one looks at the Child Care Act and the Constitution, it's the best interests of the child that are primary. Mm -hmm. uh, and our Constitution respects that and accords recognition to that. Yeah. And how, how do we kind of measure up, I guess, against the rest of the world in terms of, um, you know, where we are moving with our, with our lawmaking? We, 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 we are one of the foremost constitutional democracies. So our law is based, is, is essentially moving towards a constitutional type of law. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning and uh, giving us the details of this. And congratulations on winning the case. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, indeed, a step in the right direction for men who are the primary caregivers of newborn babies out there. So, Amanda, forward, upward, South Africa. But let's find out what else is coming up on your feel-good breakfast show.